Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the portfolio project, talk about the rubric, and show you an example or two. So for your portfolio, let's take a look at the guidelines. Okay, your portfolio will consist of three adapted lessons for English language learners. Here are the four steps. Make sure that you write lesson plans for each of the skills that are assigned. So for the three different lesson plans, one should be reading, writing, speaking, or listening. So there's four different skills. You'll choose three of those and write uh, lesson plans that are adapted for English language learners for three out of those four. So again, either reading, writing, speaking, or listening, you choose three. Then put the lesson plan and all supporting uh, handouts together into one document and that's going to be graded for the portfolio. You're going to attach your portfolio into the assignment area at the end of the semester in Moodle and in live text and the attachment can be in a PDF or a Word document. So the portfolio project is 20% of your final course grade. Okay. This is a template of what your portfolio should look like. So there should be a cover page with your name and date, a table of contents, which has the names of the three different lessons that you made, and a reflection at the end of the semester. The reflection is about doing the adaptions and the lesson plans. So what was difficult, what was easy, what did you enjoy, what did you not enjoy? Okay, a reflection. And then your lesson plans. So lesson one would be your first lesson plan with modifications, pictures, worksheets, handouts, uh, any screenshots of PowerPoints that you use, assessments, homework, follow-up, videos, anything else that you would need for that lesson. And then the same for uh, Adaption 2 and Adaption 3. So you have the lesson plan, any pictures or handouts or PowerPoints that you would use, and the same for Lesson 3. And then for your short reflection, uh, you'll talk about for example, uh, the strengths and the weaknesses uh, of your lessons or how difficult or easy it was to make modifications um, and so on. Okay, and then this is the end of your portfolio. So let me now show you an example. Okay, here is one example of a lesson plan uh, that was used before for an adaption. So this was about producers and consumers, and it was for a science class for third grade. And the student said that the timeline was 35 minutes. So she was talking about uh, energy transfer, and she mentioned that this is the first lesson for energy transfer. And she's going to give examples of producers, consumers, uh, both primary and secondary consumers. And um, if we scroll down a little bit, she has the materials that she's going to use and the procedures. So she's going to set up a food chain pyramid. And here's an example of the food chain pyramid. And each student is going to have one of the, um, the animal necklaces that they're going to place onto the food pyramid. So she has uh, the different steps and procedures. She has a video and different guided practice. Okay, and then she has a whole section for the adaptions and modifications that she's going to make for English language learners. So she wrote, pictures of animals and plants are presented to students instead of strictly contextual representations. So the pictures are an adaption. Roll card necklaces will include pictures of producers, primary consumers, and secondary consumers instead of just their names. So that helps ELLs to identify 
if they're not sure what the names of animals are in English, to have the pictures. Uh, slips of paper with animals on them will also include pictures of animals instead of just their names. Students will be grouped so that ELLs and students with special needs are partnered with their general education peers, with the mainstream students. So that's the second modification is the way she's going to pair the students. The YouTube video is another uh, modification because that provides another audiovisual explanation for the English language learners. And then she's going to give some options um, at the end of the activity that they can draw a comic strip food chain, write about a food chain relationship, or discuss a food chain relationship one-on-one -on -one with the teachers. And this is a great modification for ELLs because it gives them an option. They can either draw a picture, uh, they can write, or if they feel more comfortable talking, they could just talk to the teacher about their answers. So I think this is a really good example. I'm going to show you one more example of a lesson that might be included in your portfolio. So here is a second lesson. It's the table of contents. For this class, students actually had to do um, five different adaptions and then they chose three. So here is the uh, lesson plan that the student created. This is for an English language arts for first grade. And she has included the different standards, common core standards. She has the purpose of the lesson. So students will be able to identify the differences between common and proper nouns by identifying various objects in their surroundings and around Guam. She has the, um, the objectives. And then um, the simpler content and then the more complex content for students who are more advanced. And then her focus questions, what's the difference between common and proper nouns? Okay, um, as she's defining what proper and common nouns are, she has lots of different activities like a T-chart where they look at uh, different examples of common and proper nouns. She has some group practice. Um, then she has some independent practice. So this is the regular lesson plan for the mainstream class, and here are her modifications for English language learners. Okay, this one isn't as detailed as the first example that I showed you. Uh, so this paper obviously would get a lower grade because it's not as detailed. But she wrote, for English language learners at the early stages of language acquisition, for the independent practice part, uh, the teacher can create a mini discussion of each area where students can say the different nouns they see or the teacher can ask yes or no questions. So making uh, the assignment easier for the ELLs than what the regular students are doing. And then for a formative assessment, students can write C for common and P for proper for a different set of the nouns that the teacher gives. So here are some examples of the different activity uh, worksheets that the students are going to be working on. And again, uh, even though she has a modification, remember it wasn't as good as the first example that we saw. So you're going to want to try to make your modifications as detailed and as plentiful as possible. Okay, finally, let's just take a look at the rubric. Okay, um, here's an ex the example of the uh, rubric and it's going to be posted on Moodle. So you're going to need, of course, objectives in your lesson plan. And then if you read the exemplary, if you're trying to get an A in this course, this is what you'll need to achieve for your objectives. Okay, for your procedures, be sure to read very clearly what's expected for the procedures in your lesson plan. For engagement, what will the students do as they participate in the lesson plan? Uh, what prior knowledge do they have? What type of assessment will you do? 
Uh, do you have a range of activities that address the multiple intelligences? And I think you've already learned a little bit about those. That could be uh, spatial, visual, logistic, artistic, um, mathematical. Um, some of them are related to spiritual or naturalistic. So you need various activities to meet the different multiple intelligences. And then resources, this is where you're going to want to include um, something that's related to technology or audiovisual to help enhance your uh, activities. Okay, so now that we've gone over the expectations, the rubric and the examples, you should feel pretty confident in going ahead and starting to write your lesson plans and making adaptions for this assignment. But please let me know if you have any questions and I'll be sure to answer those. Okay, thanks so much, bye-bye.